Hello, I'm Dr. David Spock. In this brief mini lecture, I'm going to discuss the mechanism of action for HIV PrEP medications. There are three medications that are currently approved for use as HIV PrEP in the United States. Tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate emtricitabine, TDF-FTC, tenofovir alafenamide emtricitabine, TAF-FTC, and long-acting injectable cabotegavir, CAB-LA. The medications tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate and tenofovir alafenamide are prodrugs that are converted in the body to tenofovir. So in the following discussion on the mechanism of action of HIV PrEP medications, the drug form named tenofovir will be used instead of the tenofovir prodrug names. To understand how these HIV PrEP medications work, let's first take a brief look at the HIV life cycle. This illustration shows how HIV replicates within a human cell. HIV replication is a complex process with multiple steps as shown here. The important point is that when HIV infects a cell, it generates new HIV particles as shown on the upper right. And these newly formed virions go on and infect other cells. In this discussion on how HIV PrEP medications work, I'm going to focus on two steps in the HIV life cycle, reverse transcription and integration. These two steps are relevant to the mechanism of action of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs, and the integrase strand transfer inhibitors, or NSTs. So for point of reference for the HIV PrEP medications, tenofovir and emtricitabine are in the category of nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs, and cabotegravir is an integrase strand transfer inhibitor, or NSTI. To understand how tenofovir and emtricitabine work, it's important to first review the HIV reverse transcription process. The basic concept of HIV reverse transcription is that HIV RNA is converted into HIV DNA. This step depends on the HIV reverse transcriptase enzyme. The building blocks used to generate the HIV DNA are taken from the intracellular pool of nucleotides that are normally present in human cells. The actual reverse transcription process is extremely complicated. But the basic idea is that HIV reverse transcriptase orchestrates the addition of host cell nucleotides that bind to the complementary nucleotides on the HIV RNA template strand. This process takes place with the addition of one nucleotide at a time, eventually converting the HIV RNA into HIV DNA. Okay, now let's look at how tenofovir and emtricitabine block HIV reverse transcription. From a conceptual standpoint, the basic mechanism of action for tenofovir and emtricitabine is to block the conversion of HIV RNA into HIV DNA. So how does this happen? Tenofovir and emtricitabine mimic the host cell nucleotides, but these drugs lack a key structural element that is needed for the binding of more host cell nucleotides. When these medications reach a high enough concentration inside the cell, they compete with the host cell nucleotides for substrate binding by the HIV reverse transcriptase enzyme. So, if tenofovir or emtricitabine is incorporated into the elongating chain, no further nucleotides can be added. This is referred to as chain termination, and the process of converting HIV RNA into HIV DNA is halted. Now let's look at how cabotegravir works, but first, it's important to review the HIV integration step. The key concept with HIV integration is that newly formed HIV DNA is permanently stitched into human DNA. This process depends on the HIV integrase enzyme. The integrase monomer enzymes typically form as a pair or dimer. The active site for the integrase enzyme is referred to as the catalytic core domain, and this region contains a cluster of three amino acids that form the catalytic triad. 
The catalytic triad binds to a divalent cation, usually magnesium, as shown here. The magnesium serves as an enzyme cofactor. I'm showing this level of detail since it's really important for understanding how cabotegravir works. After HIV DNA is generated from HIV RNA, the HIV integrase enzyme dimers attach to the ends of the HIV DNA strand. And then, one of the integrase dimers docks on the human DNA. The integrase catalytic triad then leads an attack to splice open this region of the human DNA. The second HIV integrase dimer also docks onto and attacks the human DNA, which results in the separation of both strands of the human DNA. After several more steps that involve HIV integrase and host enzymes, the strand of HIV DNA is fully joined with the human DNA. When this happens, the HIV DNA is permanently integrated into the DNA genome of the human cell. Now let's look at cabotegravir and see how it blocks the integration process. The basic concept is that cabotegravir inhibits the integration of HIV DNA into the human DNA. Cabotegravir binds to the key catalytic core region of the HIV integrase enzyme. More precisely, cabotegravir binds to the magnesium enzyme cofactors that are complexed with catalytic triad. This binding by cabotegravir blocks the active site of the HIV integrase enzyme. So if cabotegravir is bound to the HIV integrase, this enzyme is not able to initiate the splicing open of the human DNA, which results in the failure of the integrase to transfer the strand of HIV DNA into the human DNA, hence the name integrase strand transfer inhibitor. So there's one important final point regarding how these HIV PrEP medications work. As shown in this diagram, these medications do not actually prevent every cell from getting infected with HIV. But if either of these critical steps in the HIV life cycle is blocked, the formation of new virions does not occur, which prevents HIV from establishing a full-on infection in the human tissues. The production of this National HIV Prep Curriculum Mini Lecture is supported by Grant U62PS924588 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and U10HA32104 from the Health Resources and Services Administration of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the University of Washington IDEA program and do not necessarily represent the official views of CDC, HRSA, or HHS. This project is led by the University of Washington Infectious Diseases Education and Assessment Program.